What's up, Owls? This is Mr. O with your next set of flip notes. Um, this is the uh, first flip notes of our uh, quarantine period. So uh, I'm going to put a little bit more into these notes just because we're not with each other in class. And um, we use these notes to help complete the assignments that were assigned for this week. Uh, this is going to be based on three different processes. Two are very similar and related to each other. The other one is also important, but the state somehow threw this in the standard, so I have to cover it as well. So it's going to be photosynthesis, cellular respiration, and transpiration. Complete the handout I assigned to you on Google Classroom as you go with these. Um, it will help you stay with it. First, we're going to talk about photosynthesis. And before we get there, on your handout, we break the word into two parts. Photo, if you don't know, means light. And then in the box, you're going to write the word light. And then the word synthesis, which means putting together or combining. And if you can put those things together, you will understand what this process means. There's an equation. Both uh, photosynthesis and cellular respiration um, deal with equations, meaning there's things that go in and things that come out. The first thing that goes in for photosynthesis would be carbon dioxide. And the plants take in carbon dioxide. They also take in water. So these things are taken in. They mix them in the presence of light energy from the sun. And after that, they turn those into glucose and oxygen. And we're thankful for that oxygen. Glucose for a plant is food and the oxygen is given off. So to give you this um, pretty simpler version, um, I use this demographic to show you what carbon dioxide what their formulas look like because when you see the word glucose you can see how when you break down these different elements how they can combine to form other elements meaning when you break down six carbon dioxide and six water you're able to make glucose and oxygen from that um, it's just I use this formula just so you can relate how it does work you don't need to know the formula by heart but you do need to know the ingredients Moving on is photosynthesis is basically the process in which plants use light energy to make their own food. This is the reason why I had you in the beginning right in those boxes about combining light and um, what the word really means is because this is what the process is all about. Below I have essential factors and if you don't know what essential factors means it has to happen without these essential factors. One of these things you can't have the rest, and you have three of them. Sunlight, it even happens underwater. Uh, number two is water, and you get that from your roots. And number three is carbon dioxide. And then under essential factors, I have key elements. And these are just things that um, are things to keep in mind that are important. It only goes on in the light. It occurs in the presence of chlorophyll, which is what makes plants green. It provides oxygen we breathe, and then the stomata in plants allow carbon dioxide in and oxygen out. And the reason why I put this stomata part in there, um, you'll see stomata will come back again in transpiration. The second process we are talking about in these notes is cellular respiration. You'll also find it, if you Google search it, sometimes called respiration by itself. Cellular means dealing with cells. So anything that's alive goes through cellular respiration. And respiration, by definition, is the process of taking out carbon dioxide when energy is formed. Before we go any further, please do not directly think this is breathing. Um, a lot of people think the respiratory system, and then they think cellular respiration is just us breathing, but it's a little bit more than that. So don't think cellular respiration is simply breathing. There's also a process equation that goes with this. First, you need glucose, which is what plants make in photosynthesis. You have to take in oxygen, so these things are taken in. And then you will make ATP, which is energy. It's a, there's a really big word that that ATP stands for, but in sixth grade, you need to know ATP. You let out carbon dioxide and water. You keep and use that ATP, any living thing does, to move, grow, keep warm, etc. And you give off the carbon dioxide and water. So the misconstrued people think with respiration is breathing because you breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide, but you can look at the cellular respiration process in front of you and you realize there's a little bit more than just breathing in oxygen and letting out carbon dioxide. Here's a little demographic of what I just showed you. Same thing with the formula. 
And if you started to think about these formulas, the two of them that you wrote down with photosynthesis and cellular respiration, you should start to see something in common where one starts and the other one ends, but we'll talk about more in just a little bit about that. Cellular respiration in general is the process in which all living things break down food and energy. And energy is not just simply moving and growing. It could be um, plants move and grow the same way, but keeping warm, all those different things are using energy in one way, shape, or form. So every cell in your body is making energy of some sort. Essential factors. These things, just like before, these have to happen. Without these, it can't happen. First one would be glucose, and the next one's oxygen. So a little bit simpler here is only two, not three. Key elements is carbon dioxide is given off. We are thankful for that because it'd be toxic to us if we did not. Um, that means a dog, when he breathes out, is also breathing out carbon dioxide. This goes on night and day. It does not mean it doesn't only happen when there's sunlight out. It occurs in all living cells, plants, animals, anything that's alive, goes through cellular respiration with no exceptions. And then food is broken down. That's an element that we have to keep in mind. Moving on, we have to look at these two processes together because they are known as complementary processes. Complementary mean they need each other, they work well with each other, but in science, complementary processes is the next point you're going to write down, which is the requirements of one process are the products of the other. Requirements mean what does one need and the other one is the products is what's the other one make. So if you look at the two formulas where photosynthesis starts is where cellular respiration ends. And if you look at cellular respiration where that one ends, the other one starts. There's a chart on your notes, and it shows you how they are complementary. So we're going to look at the chart in stages. First row is food. and photosynthesis, food is made, and also known as made as accumulated. And then in cellular respiration, food is broken down. With energy, you can see that energy from the sun is stored in glucose, and then cellular respiration energy is released from the glucose. Carbon dioxide and photosynthesis, it's taken in, and carbon dioxide and cellular respiration is given off. Oxygen and photosynthesis is given off, but in cellular respiration, it's taken in. In photosynthesis, they are making glucose, and then in cellular respiration, you are making energy. Uh, photosynthesis only happens in sunlight, and cellular respiration happens all the time, day and night. And it only occurs in green plants or in the presence of chlorophyll for photosynthesis and respiration happens in all living cells. And if you search the internet, you'll find process pictures like th that one I just showed you or the other one in the bottom right hand corner. It just links up to how these two work together and um, they, they coincide side by side. So that's photosynthesis and cellular respiration. They are the much bigger deal in this standard. But there is this add-on at the end of the standard with transpiration. Now, transpiration is something you should have learned in fifth grade with the water cycle. Um, it's a big part of the water cycle. It's the leaves giving off water. Um, I have a picture here of transpiration. And by definition, it's the process of water loss through the stomata. Um, in the videos I showed you on the video resource guide, if you look through those, you're going to see a lot of experiments of proving that leaves do give off water by putting bags over them. It just shows you how leaves will evaporate, um, give the water off, because sometimes water plants take in too much water, and that's how they get off to stay um, in the survival part. But here we go with this chart. Um, it's and my chart says part of a plant. Really, it should say part of a leaf. Um, these three parts are part of a leaf. Now, don't get me wrong; these are not the only three parts of a plant, and they, they're far more, and you'll learn more in seventh grade when you learn about plant animal cells and stuff like that. And, but these are the three you need to know in sixth grade. Um, the first part we're going to talk about is the epidermis. Uh, humans also have an epidermis, but you can use your free time to learn more about that. The function of the epidermis on a leaf is that you need to know is the epidermis and the stomata help prevent water loss. Um, it does far more than that, but in this standard, you need to know it helps prevent water loss. It also allows for water to be lost if needed, so depending on the conditions. The next part of the plant is stomata. This allows carbon dioxide in and out. It's almost like the mouth of the leaf and then works to prevent water loss or allows for it to happen, just depends on conditions. 
So the stomata, um, even though it's not correct to say it, I always refer to it as the leaf's mouth because it opens and closes and lets things in and out, just like our mouths do. And the last part is guard cells. Uh, their function is they surround and control the size of the opening of the stomata. I refer to the guard cells as I refer to the iris of the eye. The iris allows the pupil to open and close. Guard cell does the same thing. Um, it controls how big and um, little the stomata currently is. And the opening and closing of the guard cells helps regulate transpiration from happening or not happening. So if a plant needs to get rid of water or retain water, the guard cells kind of control that. There are some key elements here that I also put on just so we have some uh, continuity with the notes. It prevents water loss is vital or important for the survival of plants. Obviously plants need water. So allowing them to keep the water when they need it is vital. And vital is also a big word in science. Number two is they regulate, which means control the level of the water for the plant. Um, plants don't have powers that humans have, but they also have means of regulation. And that's why you have to know this part. And transpiration takes place in all green plants. We'll be moving into other things about plants. Uh, transpiration is one step into that um, section. But these are the things in this standard that you need to know. Have your footnotes filled out with the, along this video, and this video will help you complete the assignment for this week. Let me uh, send me a note on, Facebook, or on Google Classroom if you have any questions about this. I'll be happy to answer them.